Hey, what's up guys? This is Freely Bonfire back with another amazing tutorial and I almost said emissive tutorial because today it is about emissive additive particle rendering that you know from your classic particle renderings on Instagram. Okay, so this is just the most classic particles look that you can achieve in any render engine. And of course, you can also work in an additive mode with particles in Simma 4D 2024 with the new particles. And what do I mean with additive? I mean that in areas where particles are on top of each other, they will just add up like in Photoshop when you put a layer into additive mode, it will just get brighter and brighter and you can see that you get different brightness values. And this is just what will happen with an additive particle rendering mode. And this will be just in contrast to the other shading modes that I talked about in the tutorial two days ago, where we just use like a physical sphere or we can also use like little stones, like you can see it there. But yes, today we want to talk about the additive rendering mode, like this one. And just to let you know, I got this knowledge from Maxon's Cineversity. The knowledge is just a little buried there. So maybe some of you still don't know about how to achieve this look. And this is why I want to just do a little quick tip here in my tutorials to just spread the knowledge about how awesome Cinema 4D particles are. So yes, let's just dive into Cinema 4D and have some fun. Just a little quick reminder here that my Patreon place is densely packed with cool tutorials and assets. So you will get a lot of cool stuff there. You can also join it for free, but over 200 tutorials will be exclusive in the Knights tier. Okay, so if you want to really level up your skill set, then just think about to support me there. But other than that, it would be more than welcome if you ring the bell here on YouTube, do the good stuff, write a comment and just share the love. But now let's start the lesson and you can see that here this one is already looking beautiful with all of these emissive additive particle lines here. That's looking really nice. But of course, we want to build something from scratch. So let's just start here and put in like an emitter here. And I mean, you can do whatever you want here. But for example, yeah, let's just be really creative and put this one to like a little something like this one. Let's emit some particles from it. And I think that this one is already looking really interesting. But I think we can just pump this one up to a thousand. No, that's not enough. Let's put it to 10,000. And yeah, I mean, this is okay, but I want to go probably for 100,000. All right, this is looking good. Like you get this green chunk of particles here. This is looking great. But of course, you don't want to just linearly fire them up into a direction. I mean, you could do that and already be satisfied. But I'm in the team of turbulence. So I just uh, love to apply some turbulence here. So let's try this one with 100 and 100. Okay, it's looking good, but I think that this one is going way too wild. So let's put the friction into the scene. And now you can see that this is slowing down and you get a more visible pattern here. But I think this one should be set to 50. Let me see this once again. All right, now you get these particles into a nice shape. And I think this is looking good. Actually, this is already what we need to show the particle render mode with. I just think that there is just one last ingredient that I would like to put into the mix, which would be a color mapper. Okay, let's do it like this. Let's put this, for example, to velocity and let me just search for some color gradient that I like, maybe this one. And now you just have to apply the correct value here. This one is looking cool because now you get like this flickering of emissive areas, which would be fine. But I want to probably go for 180, for example. OK, and I would say that this is already working. OK, this is looking great. Maybe one last ingredient. I'm sorry, I just want to duplicate the turbulence and I want to see what happens when I put this one to 300 and this one also to 300 to multiply the other turbulence, hopefully with a bigger turbulence pattern here in addition to just get another look here. And yes, I mean, I kind of like this one. I just think that the scale is a little bit all over the place. So I want to put this one to 200 and 200. And then let me see this one last time if this one is working. I think that now you have to increase this one a little bit to just apply the gradient in a better way. And I like this turbulence a lot. This is exactly what I want. And I think because I'm so satisfied with it, I just want to cash this one. And you can see that this is not the biggest time investment. So I think like this will be done in under a minute 
minute, maybe 30 seconds. So I would just wait for it. All right, this sweet little particle magic is cached and you can see that I can scrub through the timeline and I just like to do that sometimes for like five to 10 seconds. All right, but I think that this is enough. So let's just fire up a material here. Let's click into it. And I'm sometimes really annoyed that when you create a material, it takes like one, two, three seconds and then it's there. So I think that this should actually be a little bit faster max on. But now anyway, let's go to the main point of this tutorial. Let's uncheck this one and let's press C search for a tune shader. Let's put the tune material into the mix and let's apply this one to our surface. There you go. You can delete this one actually. And when we want to load in our color mapper color data, you can also press C user data and let's put in a color user data. Let's go to the presets to the particles and put in the particle color. This is looking good and we want to apply this one actually to the emissive color because we want to work with the emissive parameter of the tool material. We don't need to have any base color. We don't need to have any reflection in it. We just want to work with the emission. You can see that the color user data is already putting the color into the emission. So when you now put this one to 10, for example, then probably or hopefully you will already see your particles. All right. And you can see that this one is already working. I mean, it could look a little bit more interesting. I have to be honest. Therefore, maybe you want to also work with the opacity here of your particles. And when you put this one, for example, to 30, then your particles will just be not 100% opaque, but they will be like 70% transparent. Okay. You can even increase this one to just make them even less opaque. Oh, and I can see that you can't see my full window here. So I will move this one over. I was just putting this one down to 10 to make my single particles less opaque. And therefore, when you have multiple of them laying on top of each other, and increase the emissive parameter of them, they will just add up in a different way. Okay. And for some reason, this one is super slow. I don't know why. Okay. Let me see this once again. Okay. And of course, I'm sorry, I'm a little bit, um, not as clever as I should be today. So what we also want to do, of course, is to probably put an RS object tag onto this one. All right, we want to maybe set this one to a sphere instance. All right, you are back to your particles as they were before. You can apply your particle material now to the group. Okay, let's do it like this. And finally, you will get the result of the tune shader. Okay, so sorry, I was already messing up the whole tutorial and uh, ruined your knowledge by sharing something really stupid with you. But now let's dive into the settings here. And now, as I said, you can apply different opacities to your particles. So maybe I want to go for something decent like 20, but I can see that the emission value is way too high. So I want to put this one to 20. All right. It looks almost the same. Let me see how this one is looking when I put it to five. Okay. Now it gets a little bit less emissive. Okay. That's what it should be. But I think something that we can also do to just increase the quality of this one is to maybe go into the particles and reduce the size of them to only 30%. Let me see how this one is looking. And yes, now you get closer to how it should look. All right. One thing that I almost forgot, just be sure that you have this one checked on. I think by default it is already on, but it is important that the opacity will affect the emissions. So you have the opacity where you and your emission where you playing together. Okay. So yeah, I mean, this is working quite well. Let me just see how this was looking when I put this one to 10 and therefore maybe put this one to also to 10. Okay, more or less, you just have to play with these values and you can also understand like these two together, like multiply of each other. So they are definitely dependent on each other. So when you have like a particle, which is only 10% opaque, but you multiply it with an emissive value of 20 on top of each other, then this one will get brighter. But of course you could also put the particle opacity to 50, but therefore maybe go lower with the emissive value of them or something like this. But I like to keep this one lower, but therefore put this one higher. And I also want to decrease the particle size even further. Let's put this one to 0.15. And now you can see that this one is getting thinner and thinner and only the areas where a lot of particles are laying on top of each other, you will get denser areas and get these glows. And this is basically the base of this effect. So you can see pretty much the same is happening here. The only thing that I did differently 
currently here is that probably I have way more particles to just get a more dense look. And I think I also increased the particle radius, the particle scale just a little bit. But overall, I would say that this is pretty much the same that I did here. So yes, this is the additive emission particle mode for your particles. And even that this one here is looking a little bit underwhelming. I'm sorry. I think you just need to have more particles in the scene and probably just play a little bit more with the scaling, with the weight of your emission and the opacity of your particles. Okay. So yes, these are the basics of this particle rendering mode. Thank you so much for your time and see you in the next tutorial. Bye everyone.